So the other day, I was looking at using the FlexMark Java library to parse markdown input into HTML output. And as part of that exploration, I was using prism.js to add syntax highlighting on the client side to my fenced code blocks. And when I was looking at the prism.js website, I saw that they had a really interesting feature. Essentially, you could pick and choose the languages that you wanted to include in the prism.js and CSS files. And then there was a download call to action that didn't go to the server. It just downloaded the resultant CSS and JS files directly uh, in the browser. And to demonstrate, right, I can have some sort of text area here and I would click download. And you can see that uh, I have a file here that was downloaded. There was no server side interaction. I like to move it, move it. And if we jump over into my editor and we drag the file that was downloaded, you can see here, I like to move it, move it. And just so you don't think I'm crazy, I'm not crazy. Download text file, again, another download. Let's drag this one in, and you can see it's the text that was in the browser. So um, I've used the download attribute of the anchor tag in the past to download images, uh, but I've never done it with plain text. In fact, I've never even created a data URI that pointed to plain text. I've only ever really dealt with images. So I thought this was something that, that uh, I wanted to learn a little bit more about. And the first thing uh, that I discovered when digging into this was that not all data URIs have to refer to base64 encoded data. I was under the impression that every data URI had to point to base64 encoded data. This is not the case. You only need base64 encoding if you're dealing with non-text payloads. And in fact, if you're dealing with text payloads, all you have to do is encode the data URI payload using uh, a standard URL encoding like the encode URI component. So I wanted to dig into this a little bit deeper. Um, I provide here a, a base64 encoding checkbox so you can actually download the file using base64 encoding or not base64 encoding, so just plain text. And let's take a look at how that works. So here's my input, here is my download text link, and you'll see that I have the download attribute here, data txt. As a reminder, the download attribute prompts the browser to download the target of the href as opposed to navigating to it. I'm just defaulting to something that won't do anything. Uh, but we'll, we'll change that href momentarily. And then of course, here's the use base64 checkbox to determine whether or not the data URI is generated with base64 or plain text encoding. Uh, here I'm just gathering some DOM references, hooking up some event bindings. Anytime someone changes the text area or toggles the base64 checkbox, I wanna update the download href. And that's really where the important part of this demo comes into play. Here I'm just grabbing the text value out of the text area and I look to see what kind of attribute I want to set on that download link. If I'm using base64, here you can see I'm including the base64 directive in the data URI. It still points to a plain text MIME type, but I'm telling it that I'm going to be base64 encoding that data. I pass that off to this base64 encode method, which we'll see in a second. If it's not going to use base64, here you can see that I'm excluding that base64 directive altogether. I'm just saying here I'm pointing to a text plain media uh, MIME type and I completely exclude the base64 encoding. And in this case, I'm just using the browser's native encode URI component to make sure that that URL is valid. Now, as part of this exploration, I also discovered that modern browsers include some functionality for encoding and decoding base64 data, which I had no idea. Now, uh, it doesn't work for UTF-8 encoded characters. I guess it doesn't work for characters that require more than a single byte to represent. But uh, the Mozilla Developer Network site, MDN, uh, has a workaround for that, which essentially uses the, um, the native base64 encoding and decoding methods, B to A, uh, binary to ASCII, and A to B, ASCII to binary. Uh, but before it passes that in, it encodes the string and then replaces uh, hex hex values with, um, to be honest, I don't actually fully understand what this is doing. Uh, but all I know is that this will allow to bypass the limitations of the native B to A and A to B methods where you can include things like uh, astral plane characters, you know, like your poop emoticons, your snowman emoticons, your, your very important data. Um, so. Uh, again, like there's really not a whole lot going on here. It's really just like a hundred lines of code and uh, It's really just showcasing two things one 
that um, not all data URIs have to be base64, which again, I just didn't realize. I thought they were all base64 encoded. And then also showcasing the fact that browsers, uh, modern browsers now support some native base64 encoding and decoding methods, the B to A and the A to B. So uh, two things that I kind of just wanted to, to codify and cement into my mental model so that I can use them in the future.